Well, if you're like me and you own a Honda NT700V, eventually you're going to want to remove the rear wheel, whether it's to uh, just replace a worn tire, uh, fix a road hazard, but whatever the case, um, unless you're the privileged type that has oodles of cash and drops it off the deal and let them worry about the whole mess, uh, you're probably going to purchase the Honda Service Manual and attempt to do it yourself. You'll notice that when you open these uh, manuals of today, unlike the old days, they're not as explicit as they used to be. Boy, they used to give you lots of illustrations, step-by-step -step, uh, procedures you really couldn't miss. Now they kind of sum it all up and give you one sentence, two sentence uh, procedures that uh, kind of leave a lot of things open-ended. Uh, the Honda's manual to remove the rear tire will tell you to remove the rear fender, remove the exhaust pipe, I like that one myself, and then remove the rear wheel. Removing the fender, they basically just give you a, a handful of steps and they leave a lot of things unsaid. And I'm going to kind of show you these procedures now. Uh, it'll tell you to remove a couple bolts from inside the saddlebags to get the fender loose and off, but it really doesn't show you clearly which ones they are. And I'll show, point them out to you. There's one right at the top, right by the cord that holds the saddlebag from falling open. There's one midrift and there's one at the bottom. These bolts will look like this. They're just your five millimeter shoulder bolt, hex bolt. There's two right up above that uh, you don't want to mistake for those. These hold the tail light in place. You do want to loosen these and the Honda manual will also tell you to loosen all the rest of them so you have a little wiggle room uh, with the saddlebag carcass. And you're going to want all the wiggle room you could possibly beg, borrow, and steal. On the right hand side saddlebag, you want to do the same exact thing. However, there's one little hidden treasure to this side. Right at the pass through between the left and right bag, there's also a little Phillips screw that goes unmentioned. You might want to loosen that guy too, just to give you a little more access to uh, movement of your saddlebag carcasses. Okay, now it's time to remove the rear fender. The factory manual will tell you that there's a plastic peg. Uh, up in the left and right corners up here that go into a rubber grommet. You got to make mental note of that because when time is due you want to grab and kind of wiggle those away without snapping off the pegs. Um, but what they won't tell you is along the left and right side, this is not a flush mount, uh, the rear fender actually has a lip that channels underneath the saddlebag plastic. The fender plastic is far more pliable than the saddlebag. Even with the saddlebag bolts entirely loose, it doesn't give you much movement there. I found that flexing the fender to get this out from underneath here is a little bit of a safer and easier bet. Um, what I did is I just kind of hold this saddlebag tightly and push in on the fender to start getting that edge away. And then you can kind of get it out from underneath the edge there. Once one side is out, the other side will follow far easier. Now the lower half of your fender is completely loose and then you can grab the top pegs and pull them out of their rubber grommets. There's going to be a cord on the back. Your li uh, license plate light will need to be removed. And I'll show you the back side of this fender in a second. Just to familiarize yourself with the back side of this fender, uh, as we spoke, here's those little pegs in the left and right corner that hold the uh, upper section of the fender to the motorcycle. You might want to just take extra note of that. Be careful of those so you don't snap them off. That does happen uh, quite often, especially with age when the plastic gets a little bit more brittle. And here's the mounting surfaces for those bolts that you removed on the inside of your saddlebags on the left and right side. Now here's the thing that I want you to take a little peek at. Before we put this back on, there's a little lip that runs up and down the right hand side. Now this lip that we spoke of goes in between these little tongues right here if you can see those clearly on this video. You don't want to go to the inside of the tongue because then your, saddle, your fender plastic will be recessed too much and the seam won't stay true. And uh, so you got to kind of slip it in there without snapping it off and without going to the inside all the way around and that makes the return trip a little tricky. In preparation for returning the fender to the motorcycle I usually use a little bit of uh, Napa silicone spray. You could probably use WD-40 as well. The um, silicone spray evaporates really quickly and if you saturate those pegs with the silicone sp spray and the grommets you'll find that the, they slip together with ease and then once the uh, silicone evaporates out it holds nice and firm. 
Okay, we're going to take you on the return trip of the fender going back onto the motorcycle. First thing you want to do is put your license plate light back into its holder. It's literally just a push and turn. You're going to have to kind of do it by feel because they didn't give you a heck of a lot of wire on there. But just give it a little pull, make sure it's in there well. Eyeball up your pegs up in the upper corners and push those in place. Now the fender's hanging and you'll notice it's getting, going nice and smooth because of that silicone lubricant. Uh, now that the fender's in place, it's time to line up those seams and get those in properly. And that's kind of where the fun begins. Okay, I'm going to do one side at a time. And once again, flexing the fender is probably the best way to go. And that's it. The right side is in. I went very, very carefully to get that edge between those tongues without pushing in too hard. And this is the easy side because, well, you could do it either left or right, but the first side is the easiest because obviously there's not a lot of tension on it and you can bend the fender around to uh, get everything lined up properly. Here comes the tricky side. Okay, this side is not fun at all. The object of the game is to get this lip in underneath the edge of this saddlebag plastic and between those tongues without doing any damage um, and it's not going to be as easy as the other side was. What I usually do is grab the saddlebag plastic here firmly and push in on the fender to kind of get it in and around that edge. The hardest part to get is this mid-drift point. Um, the bottom will go in nice, the top will usually go in nice. This outer edge right here is difficult. The easiest way to do it is to keep either pressure on, on your license plate area or here while you really kind of pull this edge out. Um, like I said, I've loosened up all the bolts a Honda manual tells you to do and I still didn't get too much movement out of this bag. I'm going to look into that a little bit deeper if anybody on the web has a suggestion for that. I am all ears. But um, other than that, Fender's back in place, you put your bolts in, and the project is uh, fender remove and replace is done.